Food and Water Union High School. Uh, way back when, in 2001, uh, many of you, I don't think any of you were born yet. And so, I've been cooking longer than you guys have been alive. Uh, yeah, um, but I'm, I'm really proud to be back home here in National City, the great city of National City. And I'm looking forward to, to getting some, some tacos or carnitas out of Friday after. <laughs> so just, I want to prove that I'm a Red Devil. Uh, I was in ASB. Um, I don't think anyone, you guys are, anyone in ASB? No? Anyone play sports? What sport? Volleyball. Volleyball also? Anyone else? Football? Awesome. Um, I did swim in soccer, and so I believe the coach, Coach Flores, he was my coach um, when I was on the soccer, soccer team. I was in CSF, I was in Denver, I was in show choir, um, homecoming candidate, and I had a graduating class of about 800 students. I was ranked, at, I want to say like number 13 out of 800. So uh, I did a lot in high school. Um, all these activities over here, in ASP, I help plan those. So uh, I always recommend if you can do a lot during high school, do a lot of extracurricular, do, do activities, sign up for clubs, sign up for sports. It's what helps make high school fun. All right. This is where you're going to meet a lot of your life, lifelong friends, um, make a lot of fun memories and whatnot. Then when you get old like me, you're going to look back and you're going to go, oh, those were the days that I could just eat anything and, and not have to worry about um, gaining too much weight or waking up with a, with a bad back, all right? Um, this is the high school yearbook. I think yours will also be digitized when you get to my age. It's really cool. Um, wish I knew that before dropping 80 bucks on the yearbook, but it's all good. And uh, the main reason why I wanted to become a chef, um, this is a true story, and excuse me for the alarm, I usually pick up my two young daughters from school. Uh, big reason I wanted to go to culinary school was to find a wife. And so it worked out for me. Um, this is 13 years ago. I made a grilled cheese mac and cheese sandwich, and my now wife, a then friend, slid into the well, didn't slide into my DMs, but um, she came in my comment section and was like, oh man, it looks super delicious. And you know, I was like, thank you. How have you been? See how I, you know, do that back? Awesome. If there's anything you learn from today's presentation is food can get you the love of your life, all right? Um, but 13 years later, we have, we're, we're gonna be celebrating our 10 year anniversary and we have two young, uh, beautiful daughters. And it's all because of a grilled cheese mac and cheese sandwich. I picked up a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese, didn't add as much uh, fluid or milk, added a ton of butter, added more like blue cheese, some broccoli, toasted it on a grilled cheese sandwich, and boom. Um, and that's the real reason why I want to become a chef. Uh, I love food also. But culinary arts, our program, moving on, it prepared students for the restaurant and hospitality um, industry. We help develop the skills necessary, you know, your knife skills, your kitchen skills, especially safety and sanitation. Safety and sanitation is key in any kitchen. Um, if you drop a piece of food on the floor, you can't just be like, oh, it's a five second rule. It's, you could potentially kill a grandma or, or a young kid or give somebody diarrhea. Um, <laughs> and so you don't want to do that. Uh, we teach about nutrition. We teach about food handling techniques as well as the function of ingredients, food economics, uh, cooking methods, as well as uh, baking and pastry. So we offer three different levels of certifications. The first one being the certificate of achievement in either pre professional cooking or professional baking and pastry. We also have a certificate of proficiency uh, in culinary arts. And lastly, we have an associate of science degree in culinary arts. Uh, the big difference is the number of classes that you take. So if you're an associate's degree, you're going to need to take some general education requirements. Okay. This is what it breaks down for the certificate of achievement uh, for professional cooking. If you notice that 
half the classes are savory classes and the other half um, tend to be baking and pastry. So we have professional cooking. This is where you learn the basic knife skills. Um, and the prereq for that is CA 181, which is safety and sanitation and nutrition. This is currently being offered online. Uh, if your parents allow you, you can technically sign up to go to uh, Southwestern College, get this out of the way, and by the time you graduate, or even uh, before then, you can start signing up for classes at Southwestern College and, and get ahead. You could actually probably earn, for some of you, close to an associate's degree by the time you earn your high school diploma, uh, which is a really great option and feature. So once you have that, you could just start working after high school and start to move up. The great thing about this is degrees offer tend to, tend to offer more pay down the road. So when you want to become a manager um, at a big property like a casino or a hotel, um, they're going to ask, oh, do you have the certification? And the associate degree is looked highly upon in the culinary industry. So this is what our classroom currently looks like. Um, we're in the stadium snack bar temporarily for the next two years as Southwestern College prepares to build us a brand new kitchen. Um, I'm super excited. Uh, for me, it's exciting to come back to Sweetwater High School because when I was a we are the class that got the prop positions and the bonds voted in to rebuild um, Sweetwater High School. So that bond had been shot down, I think, two other times. So we had buildings from the 60s and 70s when I was a student. Um, so I'm really happy to see, like, you guys have stadium seating, this beautiful theater, you have cushion seats, um, there's air conditioning. Man, try going a year-round school in the middle, middle of August in San Diego. It's not good. Uh, I would always, always like fall asleep during this period. Um, and for baking pastry, very similar, where you have food purchasing control, professional baking and pastry production, and then there's also more detailed or higher level courses, such as uh, professional pastry design and decorating, as well as uh, a bread class. So you learn how to temper chocolate, how to deal with sugar, um, if you ever watch like those Netflix shows or on Food Network, how they have those beautiful sculptures, um, we touch upon that. So we don't actually show you how to make the sculptures. We, we teach you the skills of like, this is how you temper chocolate, this is how you add onto it. And then um, here's some cinnamon rolls. This is what, one of the finals that the students made. Uh, they made cream puffs, uh, bread, some meringue, and diplomat cream. Uh, this is icing for the cinnamon rolls. So the students, the hands-on classes, students make uh, food in-house, you know, and then they have to assess it, they have to eat it. And so you have the best interest in our program to cook or bake very well, very quickly. If you bring your food, you're gonna have to eat that burnt food. Burnt food does not taste good, all right? And then, for baking pastry, you'll have to choose one of these elective courses for your certificate of achievement. And then for the certificate of proficiency, usually you have uh, business English, professional cooking, soup, stock, and sauces, professional cooking advanced skills, cultural foods, safety and sanitation, food purchasing, and computer literacy. And this totals 19 units. So you can probably finish this within a year no, uh, if you go full time, no more than two years. So we're trying to prepare students to enter the, the culinary industry quickly and efficiently. All right. And then this might be a little bit small, but basically for the Associate of Science degree, you need to earn 32 to 34 units. And then um, you have 18 to 20 units from A through D class requirements. Very similar to the, I believe, A through G requirements in high school, uh, where you have general education courses, the core classes that you need to take. Um, so the length of time is usually around two years. The certificates are, take less, one to two years, and the degrees usually two to three, depending on your course load. Um, and this doesn't apply just to culinary arts. It applies if you want to go to nursing, um, if you want to do criminal justice, 
or uh, economics or communication. Yeah. My advice is if money is an option, go to a community college because you're going to save so much money getting the first two years done, your GEs, you're going to have an associates, and then you could spend the money at the four year university. So Southwestern College, what's really great about our program is one, it's really affordable, two, it's accredited. Um, and what that means is there is a separate institution that recognizes our college, so your units can actually transfer. So if you want to go to SSU or UCSC or some other uh, university, you can. So we only charge $46 per unit, total cost for tuition, for a certificate of achievement, you're looking at 18 units, it's about eight. $128 uh, for the certificate of proficiency, 19 units, 874, and an associate degree, uh, you're looking at a little over $2,300. Right? And then you're going to have to spend a little bit more on textbooks, uh, your uniform and knife kit. However, your knife kits are going to bring with you into your actual career, and so it's not like you're just throwing money down the drain. In comparison, so the Culinary Institute of America. America is a really great culinary school, but students there spend about $20,000 per semester. So you're looking at about $40,000 per year um, to go to culinary school. And so if you compare the two, you know, it's like a tenth of, no, way cheaper, all right, of, uh, yeah, you guys thought it. Um, but possible career is once you have a culinary degree, you can become a restaurateur, you become a corporate chef, so like for Nestle or the big corporations, uh, McDonald's has a corporate chef, Jack in the Box, uh, you can become an executive chef. Um, it sounds funny, but they get paid a lot for, for corporate chefs, just because it, it's like, they go around. Test kitchens are really cool, because you can bring in different, different ingredients and start to sell, um, you know, the fries, the hamburgers, or whatnot. Uh, you can become an executive chef at a restaurant, a pastry chef, a baker, an instructor, um, a food critic, a nutritionist. Pardon me. Um, if you guys are really into science, or kind of, you can become a food scientist. Uh, research and development is really big. This is where you get to find different ingredients from different cuisines or, or cultures, and you could infuse them. Um, think about gochujang, which is you know traditionally from Korean cuisine, or sriracha, or chipotle. Those are all different like flavor profiles that didn't exist 10, 15, 20 years ago in mainstream. And now, like, like I said, like you go to Jack in the Box or McDonald's and they have those flavors. It's mainstream now. Um, you could do, you could become an influencer. Um, a lot of you guys probably have TikTok or you know watch YouTube Reels or Instagram. And so you could monetize that. You can make a lot of money. Uh, you could be in social media and other aspects or avenues. You can be a food prop designer, a food stylist. Um, if you're really into, you know, creating awesome looking plates, uh, you could be a food photographer. If you're into photography or a blogger, you can just talk about, you know, even your family, like your family's history of cuisine, of the region that they're from, the recipes that you grew up in, and you can really connect with your audience in the world. So. These are the, the median salaries that I pulled from salary.com. For pastry chef in San Diego, the median salary is $63,000. Um, of course, some make less and other have to make more. For an executive chef position in San Diego, uh, the median income is $86,000. Um, usually when you start making a lot more, it's because you work for the bigger properties or you have a, a many more years of experience. And then, I do want to point out, in and out how many guys like in and out oh. All right. So, in and out managers, it takes a while to get there, but on average in California, they make $107,000. Um, this is without you know any form of education, just hard work, but they probably make more with experience and with education. Even though it's fast food, um, I, I commend in and out just because of how their pay structure is and, and they tend to take care of their employees uh, versus other fast food. Uh, companies. And then Benjamin Babish, he is a YouTuber.